In physics, we represent the world around us with models. Now, this model is called the plum pudding model. Now, this was a kind of Victorian dessert they had. Uh, we don't really have plum puddings anymore, but I do have a muffin. And the model that they had for representing the atom was that all of the charges inside the atom, so the positive negative charges, were just dispersed equally around it. It's a bit like if you think about a muffin, and you start to look at all of the, maybe the blueberries and how they're spread out. They're not all in one place. They are spread evenly throughout the whole thing. And uh, they said that for an atom, you've basically got some negative charges and you've got some positive charges and all of these things are fairly evenly dispersed amongst the whole thing. Now that makes sense, but the problem is when they did some other experiments, that didn't fit in with the experimental data that they had. So this was the equipment used to probe the structure of the atom. First of all, they had a source of alpha radiation, and this alpha radiation within a, within a container which was sealed to stop the alpha radiation getting through, and there's a small gap. And what that meant was that the, the alpha radiation would actually come out in a straight line. Now, they needed to try and investigate what was inside the atom, and they did this by using a very thin leaf of gold foil. Now, gold was really useful because you can actually get it to be really, really thin, so only a few atoms thick. So um, that meant that they were kind of investigating a few atoms, not just a big, uh, you know, huge amount of material. Now, because they're using alpha particles, and Rutherford, uh, a scientist, found out that these alpha particles had a positive charge, um, but they've only got a very short range in air. And that means what they had to use was a chamber that was a vacuum. So that meant there weren't any particles getting in the way of these alpha particles. So you've got this vacuum inside, a very thin sheet of gold leaf, and a source of alpha radiation. And what they had around the outside was something to be their particle detector. Now at the time they didn't have Geiger counters like we do today, so what they had was a microscope. And the microscope uh, could be used uh, to kind of uh, focus um, onto where they thought the particles might be coming from. And what they had down here was something called a scintillator. And a scintillator was just a material that when it was hit by a piece of radiation, so an alpha particle, it would flash. And they could then, you know, focus their eye in on the scintillator to count the number of flashes. And they had to do this in a darkened room. And the other thing about this microscope was that they could rotate it around the central part here. So this microscope would rotate 360 degrees. Now what they expected to find was that if you fire alpha particles at the gold, that should stop it. But actually they found that when they had the detector at this position, so I'm going to call this position A, when they had the, the microscope and the detector there, they found that at A, loads and loads of this radiation came through, as if that piece of gold foil wasn't there at all. What they then found was as they moved this around to different locations, uh, for example location B, where it is up here, they found that there was still some radiation getting that way. So some of these alpha particles had been deflected by uh, the gold foil that we have here, by this gold leaf. And they thought, well, okay, that makes sense. Maybe that uh, there's something in the middle where we don't just have this um, distribution of uh, negative and positive charges like in the plum pudding model. Maybe there's a concentration of charge. But when they moved the detector round to the other side, uh, so this is now position three, they found that even at, at this position here, some of the alpha radiation was reflecting or bouncing off this sheet of gold leaf. So what could explain these observations? That first of all, most of the alpha radiation went straight through the atom, that some of it was deflected, and then a very, very small amount was deflected by more than 90 degrees. So to explain the observations that Marsden and Geiger found out when they actually carried out the experiment, they came up with this model. So this is our gold foil here, our very thin layer, only a few atoms thick, and here we have our alpha particles which have a positive charge. Now in order to explain how most of these alpha particles just uh, went straight through and were detected on the other side, that means that first of all the atom must be, must be mostly empty space. So that means it's quite easy for these particles to kind of find their way through the gaps in the gold. So that's one bit of evidence that most of the atom is actually empty. Now, why is it that some of these particles were deflected slightly? Well, that's because if you have a particle uh, which is positive going near to another charged particle, what that's going to do is it's going to repel it. And in this case, it might repel it downwards, and that means that the particle changes direction. But it also explains if we have a positive particle and a positive core to the atom, that explains how sometimes a, a particle can come towards it, it's going to be stopped, and then it's going to be repelled back in that same direction. So 
The evidence that we had was that particles were detected on the other side of the gold foil, therefore the atom is mostly empty, and some of these positive particles were deflected by more than 90 degrees, they bounce back, and that means there must be this dense positive charge inside the atom. And actually, as further work went on, they found that other things about the atom, for example, it's not just positive charge in the middle, there's also these neutral charges as well, the neutrons, and they discovered that a short time later. And also we now know that we don't just have a cloud of electrons around the atom, these actually exist in shells. And actually, further work since then has actually meant that we've actually been able to look inside, I suppose, the protons and neutrons to find that these are actually made out of other particles. And actually, there's some very weird kind of behaviour with the way that electrons move around atoms. And this is something that you might discover a little bit more in A-level physics.